Well, we've been through a few videos telling you what Jesus did and how sin came in the world through Adam and Eve and the first marriage God ordained and then how Paul came about and he gave us the gospel or giving us the gospel. So there's you know you go to church sometime the pastor says oh I got nothing to talk about well there's always something to talk about and I got thinking about that the other day we always have something to talk about and that is the cross and what Jesus there did for our salvation our redemption from sin and being our redemption from being ever lost he is death what they said it the other day the death the life he lived qualified him for the death he died and the death he died qualifies me us for the life he lived so you got to take a look at that and figure that out if it doesn't make sense I'm sorry I'll try to make sense of it so Christ died for all God's God's prescribed order of victory and God's will is that nobody should ever perish meaning go to hell but we are born going to hell and God knew that man would fail he foreknew that's when they talk about predestined in uh, Ephesians Ephesians the predestined it's not that some of us are predestinated to go to hell and some are predestinated to go to heaven we are all destined for hell due to the fall in the garden that Adam and Eve partook in and that's where Satan tried to foul God's best creation most highest creation human man you know so we talk about man we're talking about the humans God created and we were created to serve him and when Adam left that that appointment so to speak that he was given by eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil he had to be kicked out of the garden and then forever they, there's never any uh, evidence that they repented and said they were sorry they just blamed each other and that's what we like that's what we tend to do is blame each other for whatever it may be so the remedy is that God had to be a become man in the flesh so he could redeem us back to eternal life and the eternal life we get is going to heaven now that we're talking about the original sin dominating us and then he gave a he gave a sacrifice sinless sacrifice of himself in, in the flesh of Jesus Christ he, for in John 1 he, he, is, he is the word and the word was God and the word was with God well, Jesus is the word so the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is the story of Jesus Christ and him crucified and the whole story of Jesus Christ and him crucified is the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and backwards so we are so lucky nowadays we don't have to go to temple we don't have to sacrifice an animal we don't have to take the flocks and then put our hand on the slaughter for redemption of our sins and that's the way the Old Testament looked forward to the, the cross as they look forward to it for redemption as well as salvation.
you following the law. And then when Jesus came on the scene, they killed him because he abolished or he became the law. He was a sacrifice, true sacrifice that fulfilled all the law. He says, I come not to, to uh, destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. And he kept it perfectly. So we go back to the life he lived was the perfect life because he, he kept the law of the Old Testament as well as introduced and became the sacrifice for the New Testament. So the life he lived was perfect and that qualified him for the death he died. There was no other blood that could wash away our sins and our sin of rebellion, our sin of, of uh, refusal. And there was only one drop of blood and that's Jesus Christ that he shed on that cross for all humanity to have a chance. We say chance because you are called but you have to accept that call. And we accept that call by receiving and accepting what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. In no other uncertain terms of anything else, there is no other way. So he, he lived the life, the life he lived, a perfect life, keeping the law, never sinning, because he knew no sin. He became sin, but he knew no sin. And therefore, when he died, the death he died paid the ultimate total price once and for all for sin, the sin of unbelief. And our belief and faith in him and what God sees that gives us now eternal life. And it's there for the taking free by grace so the life he lived perfectly qualified him for the death he died and the death he died then because it was for us qualifies us for the life he lived so we don't get it any other way there's only one way and that's by our faith ever in Jesus Christ and him crucified for every need that we could ever think of need for salvation for our sins we commit be seated by the right hand of God and because of our belief in him we are made righteous we are justified we are sanctified in in position and we are being sanctified daily as long as our faith remains in the object of Jesus Christ and crucified then the Holy Spirit can come along and do what he needs to do in us to keep bringing us back to salvation to our position check out the description in the details for ministry material that helps our ministry grow they're made for you a print on demand for purchase thank you in advance we're getting 1.1 it said 1.7 for a second. There we go. If you can see that, we're going to 1.7 knots. Now here comes the wind. Let's see what we pick it up to. Little break here. Still not showing the heading, but we'll uh, we'll get that worked out. All right. Now if I mounted this guy right here, it says we are tilting over healing seven degrees to the left and we're going 2.4 knots ain't that awesome now we're going to pick up a little more speed because we're getting the wind so we're going to ride this ride here yeah it's cooling off too yeah look at that here we go folks maybe we'll pick up some speed Yeah, there we go. There's three.
three. Looking at three knots. 3.1. That's just with the main. The main's a power cell. Yeah, man. That's awesome. We'll see. Yeah, my compass is about nine degrees off. Here we go. A little more wind. A little more wind in my sail. Yep. Got it shaped. You see how it's shaped the curve? There's 3.2. So the inside of it gives me more makes more wind have to go faster on the outside if I turn it up just a little bit more into it let's see 3.3 knots we're gonna find out here 3.3 keep that heading on the stays steady like this this is nice I thought there was some wind out here today yeah 3.2 Kind of slowing off because I turned into the wind a little bit. I'll turn out of it just a little bit. Make that air try to go faster on the other side. And that's the way the fastest sailing. You get in the catamaran, this guy will, this catamaran will get up the hill on one, uh, one side of it, you know. So. You see my telltale's leaning the wrong way. So if I adjust the sail a little bit. And now you see that telltale come out a little bit. And we might be able to pick up a little more speed that way. I'm just holding the same heading on the compass. It's uh, 095. Oh, and this is 087. So you got to figure out what you're going to believe. The one on the boat, which... It's a wet compass, and this one's a digital, which is working off a GPS. So it might be easier, maybe more accurate working the one on the GPS. I don't know. We'll see. We'll check back in a second here. Here we go. Now we're going to pick up some speed. Let her lock it in and let her sail. Look at that. Yeah. That's 2.930. easier you know just is so I turned off the wind just a little bit here I mean turned away from it and that's going to spill air out of my sail but you can see the telltale up there still it's still uh, flutter, fluttering back and forth I'm keeping the good heading here about 095 on my compass here you see it that yellow line there lubber line so you see why the compass has to float it's wet otherwise it would get locked up on the casing and not not really spin so we saw 3.3 and I, I think it's recording it should be recording my uh, 